Hi there, this is Dominic Dejean Craig. I'm making a live video for you. Actually, I'm live, but um, you're going to watch the video. So um, today I want to talk about why Obama was a failure for the United States and for everybody in it. And we're going to divide this video up into two parts, um, foreign and domestic. And we're going to start with foreign policy. Number one, while Barack Obama was the president, he dropped a bomb every 20 minutes for eight years on seven countries that we were not at war with. That's number one. These were non-judicial killings. These were drone strikes. The, he killed people that weren't accused of a crime, weren't, didn't get a day in court, didn't get a trial, nothing. They got a bomb. They got killed. Many of these people were children. You don't want to watch the films. They're heartbreaking. They're heartbreaking, man. Um, old people, wedding parties. Wow, man. Right. And that's why, um, Bradley Manning was in jail because his conscience wouldn't let him keep it a secret and he let it out. And what did Obama do? He began the war on whistleblowers. You remember when he said that his administration was going to be the, the most transparent? Well, not so, not so. You got, um, Edward Snowden is still in hiding in Russia. Like, um, and we don't, I don't know how many other people have paid with their lives for exposing the crimes of the Obama administration. Every 20 minutes for eight years on seven different countries that we were not at war with. Can you imagine? You're not accused of a crime. You're not under arrest. You're in your country and you get bombed to death. And he did that every 20 minutes. Men, women, children, wedding parties, funerals. He also did the illegal coup in Ukraine. And we should probably talk about that because that's finally coming out. Um, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Hillary Clinton, Undersecretary of State Noriega, Nancy Pelosi and her kid were over there and they overthrew um, Viktor Yanukovych, because this is what happened. The EU offered Ukraine a certain amount of money to join the European Union, but Russia was their largest trading partner. So Russia matched the money. And I'm not exaggerating. The Obama administration went over there, armed the neo-Nazis, sent in snipers, and overthrew the government. That's what happened. During this time, um, wow, man, Biden and Clinton were buying up all the land that the pipeline was supposed to travel over to transport natural gas into Europe so that they would get rich. Now, Russia had 24,000 troops and a naval base stationed in Crimea. Um, Crimea says, hey, man, we didn't elect those people. That's an illegal coup. We don't respect that. So they had a referendum and they rejoined this. They rejoined Russia. But um, Obama, they'll tell you that, no, the Russians invaded. The Russians invaded Crimea. They had 24,000 troops stationed and a naval base there. After this, wow, man, it gets worse. Um, like I said, the neo-Nazis took over and they attacked their brothers in the Donbass, the Donetsk, and was it the Ilgansk region of the Ukraine? And this went on for years. And um, the Russians tried to broker peace, um, but the the Kiev wouldn't let it happen. Kiev wouldn't let peace happen. So it's cool. It's cool to so check it out. This is what happens. So you know, everybody knows Joe Biden and his son went over there and extorted the government out of a whole bunch of money. And this money was supposed to be used to help Hillary Clinton get reelected. And then she lost. So what are they going to do? So they, they tried to hang out with Trump. Trump told them to get lost. Obama didn't send the money. He didn't send the $14 billion that he promised. So they had rocket technology and they sold that super duper amazing rocket to North Korea. Now, let me tell you about this rocket. The rocket went up 10 times the height of the International Space Station, came down, landed in the Sea of Japan. The whole world said, <gasps> Kim said, look, don't you guys worry. I can wipe out anybody I want to, but these weapons are pointed at the United Snakes of America. 
That's what he said. That's how they got armed. Then ISIS in Syria. ISIS in Syria. Now, I don't know who remembers. I'm thinking this has got to be back in 2012, 2013. Out of nowhere, Obama's like, hey, we're going to we're going to attack Syria. What? Why? They didn't attack us. We're going to attack Syria. So the Syrians marched in the streets. OK, no problem. I mean, talking the American Syrians marched in the streets to stop this madness. A couple of days later, Islamic State. They came out of nowhere, just like Antifa. Islamic State. Now, today we all know that Obama armed and trained Islamic State. And the funding came, the, the, the weapons came from America and the funding came through Saudi Arabia. He created ISIS. He created ISIS. All those beheadings, that's more blood on his hands between the beheadings and the drone strikes and all the other evil that ISIS did. Every time an ISIS camp got liberated, they had American weapons inside. Every single time. And it gets worse. It gets worse. There was the Ukraine. There was ISIS. There was Honduras. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. There was the Sudan. It goes on and on and on. This man was the devil. This man was the devil, man. I mean, the more you look, the worse it gets. Okay, so that's the foreign policy. I could go on, but I got to get on the domestic policy because he was bad for Americans. He was bad for Americans right here, right now. Now, I don't know how many factories he closed, but over 200,000 manufacturing jobs was lost. He closed over 200 coal burning plants, closed them, closed them. And then he took taxpayer money and invested it in Brazil, in Mexico, in, in Colombia, so that they could drill, so that the oil money, the oil revenues, and the oil jobs would go down there. And then he had the nerve to come on TV and say, the jobs are never coming back. What a punk. What a punk. That's how Trump turned it around. He started drilling again. He started doing the natural gas. He, re he brought coal. And then the jobs came back. And just like the punk that he is, he tried to take credit for it. He said, well, okay, those jobs I said were never coming back. They're back because I brought them back. What a punk. What a punk. To give you an idea how much of a punk he is, okay, the L.A. riots. Now, let's be honest. I'm going to run through this quickly, but we all know what happened. A man named Rodney King was brutally beaten by members of the Los Angeles Police Department. Somebody filmed it, put it on television. The, the, the cops went on trial. They beat the rap. After they beat the rap, there were riots in the street. The city was torn down. The city was torn to pieces, ripped to shreds. Okay. The president was George Bush. What did George Bush do? George Bush called TV. I think it was Channel 5. I think it was... KTLA Channel 5. And he talked to them live. Live. And this is what he said. He said, and this is a paraphrase because I don't remember his exact words. He said, look, they're guilty. What happened was a vicious miscarriage of justice. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to retry them on federal charges. We're going to find them guilty and we're going to make sure they do their time. And that's exactly what he did. He put them on federal charges, found them guilty, and locked them up. Um, what was it? Eight weeks later, um, was it the Officer Coons? Officer Coons got out um, eight weeks later and was walking the street. And the president called TV again and said, wait a minute. Didn't I put this man in jail? Why is he walking the streets? Everybody will do their time. Now, that's what Bush did. That's what President Bush did. A Republican. Okay, fast forward. Now we got Obama. We have an unarmed kid. An, he was a kid, Trayvon Martin, with a, with a bag of Skittles and an Arizona iced tea, walking home when a 
you know what, and we need to face this fact too. This needs to be another video, but a white supremacist Mexican, because, and the reason I say that, we'll touch on this briefly. According to the Democrats, if you are a Latino, you can't be a white supremacist. You can't be a racist. If you're a homosexual, you can't be a white supremacist. You can't be. But yes, there are white supremacist Latinos, white supremacist Mexicans, and Zimmerman was one. He beat the rap. There, there were riots in the streets. What did Obama do? He came out and called the rioters thugs. And we all know the word thug is the new word for nigger. He came out to me, well, if I had a son, he might look like Trayvon. What a punk! What a punk! Him and Eric Holder, bunch of punks! Bunch of punks, man. Right? This guy, he, he supported and funded Planned Parenthood. Abortion is the number one cause of death among blacks. The number one cause. If you are black, you have a 50-50 chance of making it out of your mother's womb. In many places, there are more blacks killed by abortion than there are born. Margaret Sanger, abortion, that was originally called the Negro Project. Hillary Clinton said that's her hero. That's her hero, Margaret Sanger. That's her mentor. And President Obama funded Planned Parenthood. That means he took your daughters, excuse me, your dollars. He took your tax dollars and used them to murder kids. What a punk. What a punk, man. What a bloodthirsty, murdering punk. Now, what I want to know is, how are you going to be pro-black? How are you gonna, how are you gonna say black lives matter and you support Planned Parenthood? You support abortion. That's a punk. And, and, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. This guy was so bad. Now, there are people out there who they want to call me a coon. They want to say bad things about me, right? Because the internet it separates me from them. They would never talk to me like that in person because I would break my foot off in their ass. Obama is a punk. Always going to be a punk. Always going to be a punk. He was born a punk. He going to die a punk. And if you're black and you support the Democrats and this punk foolishness, well, you know what? You're not only a chump, but you're a traitor to your race. Straight out. Tell him I said so. That's my video. Listen, if you guys want to send me some money, don't. Don't do it. Take that money you were going to send to me, open an E-Trade account, open a Fidelity account, Schwab account, and invest. Because right now, while Trump is the president, the economy is booming, and whatever they're telling you is lies, you need to make some too. You need to make some too. Oh my goodness. Oh, but let me keep going. Oh my goodness. This guy, black youth unemployment under Barack Obama was 49%. 49%. He presided over the greatest transfer of wealth out of the black community ever. Over a billion dollars. And he didn't bail out anybody but the banks. And nobody was held accountable. Nobody. We needed a leader. We got a referee. And that is my video. I'd like to thank you for watching. I'm going to upload this one right now. Have a nice day.